Hello. Today I'd like to talk about the sequoia reference solution and, and how it uh, demonstrates um, the use of repositories as well as dependency injection. Uh, so uh, in the last session, we talked a little bit about the, the content types being used, and, and we really had two content types. We had a category and we had um, a content item. Um, and one of the things I wanted to be able to do is, is provide a repository for, for fetching the list of categories, as well as for fetching all the content items of a particular category uh, and, and do that in, in, in a proper uh, repository. So in uh, the Visual Studio solution, the, the types are defined within the foundation module, uh, as well as a repository that deals with fetching the, the, those data. Uh, so you can see under sample, under foundation, dot sample, uh, we have a repository. And one of the things you're always going to want to do is define an interface. And uh, you can see here, I have a list of sample content categories. And, and by the way, these are glass types. I'll talk about glass in a future uh, video. Um, and then I have a get sample content by category. And you, you want to define an interface because when you register uh, your service with uh, the service locator for, for dependency injection purposes, uh, another module in the future may be able to override your, your, your registration by having an interface, uh, you give it an extensibility point uh, in, if you want to change uh, the implementation in, a, in another module, which may be very useful. Um, the implementation itself is here. Uh, and you can see we just inherit our repository interface, uh, and we have some pretty straightforward uh, uh, implementation here. So uh, I'll just take you through. So get a data folder. I, I, this was just something uh, I, I built as a private method to, to get a handle on the current site's data folder. Um, everything in XSA leverages the same service location, service, service locator um uh, patterns and, and uh, the dependency injection aspect of it. So uh, get data folder, uh, what we're actually doing is we're getting a multi-site context. This is an XXA class that we can actually get. Um, and then once, once we have it, we can actually uh, get the data item or get the data folder. But you could see there's actually a number of methods here. Uh, we can get the home item, the shared setting item, the media item, the tenant item, uh, and these are all dynamic based on the site context that you're in. Uh, so whatever you need, you can leverage the service locator multi-site context to go get it. In this case, I want the data folder. Uh, I'm doing it based on the context site start path and, and returning returning that as the data root. Uh, so once I have that, I can actually get the first child inheriting from, from my template. Um, in general, I, I like to create constants files uh, with all your template IDs and things like that, just to not have that littered through my classes. Uh, and then once I have that um, request context, this is uh, uh, actually gives me the glass context. I'll talk more about that in, in, in my session on glass. Uh, and then uh, the categories uh, is uh, what I really want to do is cast cast that that folder as a, a glass. Uh, item I have called a glass class I have called sample content category folder, uh, which then gives me the ability to get its children as our sample content category as a list. Um, so we're getting into the glass details, but that's just one aspect of it. Um, my other methods, get sample content by category, uh, wants one of those categories, and, and given that category, it then wants to um, do a do a content search API to give me all the items in that site's data folder um, that match that particular category. Um, so how do I do that? I get that data folder again. I get the first child inheriting from my uh, sample content template. Uh, and then I create a, a search context. So I get uh, uh, an indexable item for, for that content root. I create the context. Uh, and then what I'll do is, is build a predicate builder. There's a couple ways you can you can you can basically go right into your queryable here. Uh, just as a best practice, I like to use predicate builders because you may have more complex um, uh, queries that have subqueries and things like that, which you won't be able to use the query, uh, queryable directly. So by using your your using a predicate builder every time, you give yourself that flexibility of being able to do whatever you need to without having to rewrite it. And if the requirements get 
more difficult. So generally recommend if you're, you're doing a lot of content search API stuff, be consistent in how you, you do your queries so it just becomes easier to understand and maintain in the long run. Uh, it's a bit more verbose, but it gives you that power and that flexibility that chances are you're going to need at some point in your solution. Uh, so in this case, we're, we're, we're doing a query um, where the path contains that content root ID, so we're only searching underneath that data folder, uh, and the category matches the category that we're passed in. Uh, which is, I mean, it's stored as a string. I'll talk about search in this uh, a little bit later uh, in another session. So once we do that, we get the results. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, is we're actually going to get the results not as the 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 uh, class class. We, we get it back as a sample con content search result item. And what we're going to want to do is just use glass to convert that to, to the item. Uh, this way we can turn the item list. Uh, this is something you need to think about in terms of your repository, whether you're, you're really returning uh, the Sitecore item, whether you can get away with pet returning um, uh, the actual search result item, which is, doesn't have everything. Uh, or doesn't have everything easily, uh, or you want to return a strongly typed uh, glass class. So it's just something you need to think about uh, in, in, in your mapping. There are implications of that. There is a, a mapping penalty we're taking because we're taking, we're basically looping through each item and, 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 and returning it. It would be faster to just return the, the search result item, but this was a simple case. And, and uh, in a lot of cases, you're not dealing with a lot of uh, search results. This, this isn't that big of a deal, and it's more flexible to have that strongly typed item. Um, now, once you have your repository defined, what you actually want to do is, is use a pipeline. Uh, and I have a configurator class uh, which runs as a pipeline uh, that will uh, add your, your service to Sitecore's uh, service locator. Uh, so once it's there, it can then be injected into any constructors that require it, or uh, you can leverage that same type of syntax that we did for the multi-site context to, to fetch an instance of my class. And you can see we're just adding a scope version with our interface and our uh, uh, strongly typed class. Uh, and you do need to make sure you have a config file uh, that registers it. So we can see under services, we have a configurator of that type, which then will run and make sure it's registered properly. Uh, similarly, we have repositories in our feature layer. And you can see we, we have a sample categories repository. Now, this is uh, a variance repository, and this is really about getting uh, the list of categories. Um, and this is actually uh, requires uh, an iSample content repository, which is this other one defined in the foundation. And the service locator will automatically inject this, so it has it. And essentially, there's no real uh, template behind the sample categories. Uh, item, but we still wanted a repository so we can actually go get the categories for it. Uh, so that's injected uh, automatically. And that too has its own pipeline uh, for a sample feature configurator, which is uh, adding that repository as well as registering uh, our controllers. Uh, and what that'll enable us to do is to uh, instantiate the controllers with those dependency injections. So those controllers uh, our sample categories controllers, you can see it's, it's just a normal variance controller. And it has, it requires that sample categories repository that I just showed you. Uh, and it will automatically instantiate this, which will instantiate a, uh, the, the sample repository underneath it automatically. So you don't have to worry about wiring things up or doing things up yourself. Sitecore does it for you. Uh, and then in the get model, we, we get our model and then we're just passing it to the view and that will automatically call the repository to get all those categories so that they're, they're ready for binding. Um, uh, just the implementation of that, I mean, taking it to the view side, right? So sample categories are index. So this is a variant. I just have a, a little bit of a check so that we get a message if there's no categories. Because uh, if you run this on a site that you didn't define anything, that's what you're going to get. Uh, but otherwise, what we're going to want to do is for every category we have, we're going to go through each of the variants and, and bind it to the template. Right. So that's that. The other controller, the sample content list controls are a little bit different. This is actually implementing a glass variant controller. 
that avoids the need to define a custom repository for it. Uh, and what this is going to do is is give me um, the the model, which is the item bound to this component, uh, fully populated even with uh, the glass class instantiated the sample uh, contentless model. So this is something custom. The code for this is all really defined in Foundation Glass. If you're interested to see how that works, but this just makes it easy so that you get a strongly type view model. Uh, without having to build your own custom repository uh, or building your own custom view model if you're using something like code generation uh, to generate uh, glass model classes. Uh, but I did add a field uh, called content, which isn't automatically wired up because this we wanted to wire to our sample content repository, uh, which you can see um, is injected into this thing. Uh, and we'll we'll get our sample content by category, which will run our content search API and, and populate it to content and then pass it back to the view model. So this view model is a bit different. Uh, so if we look at our views in our feature, you'll see we have um, one, our model is our variant renders glass model uh, of type sample contentless model. So it's not just a variant model, this extends that. Uh, so that also gives us access to the glass class of it. And you can see model.glass model gives us that strongly typed um, uh, object. And here we have uh, our glass helper for editable. So if you're used to glass and you're used to the editable syntax, you'll, you'll love being able to use that in XXA. In this case, we're, we're making the title field editable. Uh, but after that, I want the actual individual items to be editable or, or modifiable as a rendering variant. So um, we loop through all the content items and we render them as a variant. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. So, yep, this one, I just wanted to give everybody an overview of kind of the whole repository pattern, uh, how the dependency injection works, uh, so that you can take similar approaches in, in your own solutions. Thanks.